Well, hi everybody, Father Alex here again. I am the vicar of St. Matthew's Church in Burnley. I'm also the host of the Godcast, and I'm also the author of Our Daily Bread from Argos to the Altar Priest Story, which is out now and available from Amazon and all good bookshops. My guest today on the Godcast is Ian McNabb. Ian McNabb is a singer-songwriter who whose early career started as the frontman for the band The Icicle Works and has gone on to have a number of albums as a solo artist and he's performed up and down the country. So I really hope you enjoy this interview with Ian McNabb. If you do, then please subscribe. There's lots of other musicians and uh, writers and authors, politicians, you name it, there's something for everybody. So do please subscribe. But for now, enjoy this interview with Ian McNabb. Welcome. Well, Ian, it's uh, it's fabulous to welcome you to the Godcast. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, a few health issues, um, but you know, apparently that's what happens when you get to a certain age. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, feeling good. Um, Making lots of records, uh, just working on this thing called uh, Fleetwood McNabb, which is my um, takes on Fleetwood Mac songs. So yeah, very exciting. C keeping busy. Have you got Have you got a, a schedule for that, Ian? Have you got an idea when that'll be out and people can hear it? No. <laughs> Is that how you like it? <laughs> Do you just kind of? Um, I, I mean, I, I like to make sure that my supporters are well supported. Um, I, I don't know. It, it'll be done when it's done. Yeah, yeah. Ian, I've got. I've. I've just in the middle of a bit of time off work. Uh, I've managed to get uh, January off work, and I've been going through my old vinyl records. Um, I've got an old Technics record deck over my shoulder, and. It's been really quite nostalgic looking back at some of the, the songs that shaped me and that I feel were influential to me. What 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 songs were influential to you? You know, and I, I know there's always like this. There's always bands of a certain generation, aren't there? Like the Beatles, whatever. But are there songs that stick in your mind? What you mean, songs that influenced me? Yeah, as a kid, as a kid, I mean, you know, like when you were a teenager. Well, uh, very much um, David Bowie and uh, Mark Bolan. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's like when I heard Get It On and Metal Guru and Telegram Sam. That really inspired me when I heard Starman um, and a few others. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, do you know what, Alex? It was like I didn't really know what to do at that point. All my friends were into football, and I, I was into that in a, a little bit. And then, and then just music just arrived. Mm. A blessing from heaven, Alex. <laughs> Uh, truly, truly a blessing from heaven. Yeah. And and just went, and, and I just went, well, I'm going to do this, aren't I, you know? <laughs> and it was like, oh, you'll never make any money, you know, all, <laughs> all of that stuff, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's like, well, I don't care about making money, really. I just want to do what I find interesting. And um, I, I went down that path, you know, and uh, and do you know what, Alex? It's like that was when I was 12, yeah. and I'm now 63, and I'm still here doing it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm great. I really like what you said about, you know, music just arriving. That 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 happened for me. I mean, uh, I, I didn't go on and become a musician in any, but the music, just the that music arriving at my doorstep for me it was it was kind of the new romantic era you know i'm a huge depeche mode fan and some of those songs really shaped my thinking and 
made me dig deeper. How did it, how did that music arrive in for you? lead to becoming a musician did you kind of go to your parents and say i need a guitar i want lessons how did it evolve for you well as you uh, just described it there alex um my my parents were you know i'm an only child spoiled wrong so they were very encouraging and i went oh, oh i quite fancy doing this you know, well if you're going to do that you're going to do it properly so they sent me to uh, guitar lessons. They sent me to theory lessons. And do you know what? I, I, I couldn't have been happier. They were so supportive. Um, and I, I really do have, have to say that because I, d I do have friends that um, didn't get that level of support that I did, you know. Uh and and it was it was it was like they were like yes, do it this way, do it properly. Um, and here we are, you know, and you know, just sadly, my 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 mum passed recently, and uh, that was just, it's been very hard for me because we were so close. My dad died when I was young, but. One thing that comes into my mind, Alex, is I go, they really gave me every chance possible, you know. And I I don't think that you can be lucky at that. No, that, that's 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 also a blessing from heaven in many ways, isn't it, to have, you know, sadly my my work, you know, uh, some of the, the families I meet, they're, they're not always blessed with what you've just described. So it, it is a blessing in many ways. Yes. Yeah. So, so you you meet these families that don't have the the kids don't have the support and yeah. You know, it's it's like some of my very closest friends, Alex. Um, and this this really disturbs me. They go, oh well, you know, I opened this bar, but my dad didn't say anything nice about it, and uh, you know, they never get any support and you know that really is is quite upsetting to me i always got support and a good kick in as well um you know it's like me mom would be like hey, you know i'd be writing a new tune and she'd go like <laughs> boom 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 i'd be down in my cell and she'd go sounds like bob dylan sounds like neil young write one of your own you know but it, it worked on on every way and you know supportive and just do, do, do you know what Alex I feel so blessed by mm -hmm. the good Lord above uh, which by the way I do believe and um, you know to, to to have that level of support was it it was a beautiful thing yeah. Just touching on the faith aspect, Ian, were, were the family religious? Are you happy to say, were you, you know, were you involved with church or a, a, well, you know, a person you know, of a certain generation? I'm a Catholic. Um, they weren't too bothered about it, and neither was I. But I tell you what, Alex, I pray. And uh, I, I, I still am a Catholic. Uh, I, I know that people have a problem with that. Um, do you know what, Alex? you got to believe in something. And I believe in, in him. Yeah. And, you know, I don't like religious zealots. You know, I think it's caused a lot of problems, mm. as, as we're seeing... You know, there's a lot of uh, people getting killed because of that kind of stuff. But um, do you know what, Alex? I, when I go to bed every night, I say the Lord's Prayer. And it gives me comfort. Yeah. Can I tell you why? Uh, I've no idea. I've no idea, but you've got to believe in something. And and I I firmly do believe. 
I think what you said resonate will resonate with loads of people. When I was, I, I've not always been a church goer. And when I was a kid, I used to say the Lord's Prayer, and I don't know why. I can't even remember where I learned it from. Probably school, and and just as you described, it gave me comfort, and somehow that led to to, to me getting a dog collar. But, but that's a, that's a different story. But I was wondering if um, if your your faith influences your writing, Ian, and, and if so, how. Well, very much so. Um, I, you know, I, I try not to be preachy. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Bono or the Edge. You know, <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I, I don't tell people. I, I don't think you should tell people what to think. But if you're interested in my music. Um, it's you know my my thing is it's just like I try to spread the law of positivity. Um, do, do you know what you've got me thinking there? Um, Ian, do you, do you think it, do you think it will? I don't obviously don't want to pry into your private life, but you said you lost your mum. Do you think that will be um, that will be unpacked in your writing? If not yet, then somewhere down the line. I've no idea, really. Um, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm trying to think of something clever to say. <laughs> um, look, l let me put it this way: I don't think we're here by accident. I don't know if it, it was the aliens or if it was the, the, the great spirit. Or what? I, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know, do we? We don't know. But I choose to believe that this. The, how can you not believe? Uh, you know, it, it's like when I go to bed at night, I go, thank you, baby Jesus, for my life. And I don't think of myself as a religious person. But thank you, baby Jesus. And I don't know if that stuff in the box was real or nobody knows. But I think, Alex, um, you know, the whole idea of, uh, you know, this all being random is, uh, no, it's not random. No. no. Um, the, the, the creator... God, I sound all religious now. What have you got me doing? You sound more religious than me, but it's fine. It's lovely. Well, it's you know, I, I, honestly, Alex, I, I do, I do, I believe, I believe, and I can get emotional about it. You know, it's just like so, sometimes I, I can just, um, I go, somebody's sorting this out, somebody's thinking about me, somebody's being kind to me. And if, if I'm a bad person, I get punished. And if I'm a good person, I get treated well. And I, I can I can feel, I can feel that something, look at me, I'm all upset now. I can feel that there's something there. And mm. if there wasn't something there, I don't know how to be able to cope with it. And in a positive way, that does influence my songwriting. And, um, I, you know, when I've, Alex, when I've finished a song, I, I go, thanks. You know, it may, may sound a little bit pretentious to say this, but I don't think I can claim responsibility for writing that song. I can claim a little bit. But somebody else did it, yeah. And it and it was that I I call it the great spirit. It's fascinating stuff. This this interview is far di deeper than I expected it to be, but I'm very happy to just pursue this because I think I th I think I I personally think we're all given individual gifts, and that comes from somewhere. For me, that comes that gift is from above, and your your gift is clearly songwriting. So do you, do you see it as a you know, I, I get the feeling you don't necessarily see what you do as a career, uh, Ian, but you see it maybe more as a, a vocation, more as a, um, 
as an experience for others. Would would you just unpack that a bit for us, if you can? <clears throat> well, uh, as a career, uh, I've, I've never, I, I, I've never thought about it in any way. Career, that's just like um, that's about money. I I don't see it as that way. I mean, I mean, Alex, listen. I'm sitting here talking to you today. You know, I've had a few health issues and I'm getting better and I'm writing songs and, well, do, do you know what? I've, I've just done this thing um, called Fleetwood McNabb, which is uh, my versions of Fleetwood McNabb songs. And I've, I've put the pre-orders up and an incredible amount of very wonderful people of you know pre-ordered it and that means i can pay my bills and and god bless them for that you know that's so kind um yeah. <laughs> i don't really know what else to say you know it, do you know um, you've got me just thinking in about you know this whole idea of a career i don't know i don't know if you're familiar with the band the milltown brothers uh oh. they're a, you know, a, a, a group of guys from my neck of the woods around East Lancashire. Yeah, what a great band. Yeah. And I was chatting, Simon Nelson from the Milton Brothers came on and and he was talking about, you know, the the difficulties and um, they had a successful first album, probably not not dissimilar to you with the high school works. Um, and then it, it kind of, the, the kind of, if career is the right word, or the success of... of sales numbers fell away a bit but you know he was very pragmatic about it and um reflected on it that he'd had a you know 30 odd years in music and it was still giving him these great highs is that how you approach things ian or well, or differently you know what alex i i i don't do it for the for the money uh, I uh, and what you said there was very interesting. Um, you know, so you know they had one album that the Milltown Brothers had one record that that was successful, and then it was a bit a bit hard work for them. Um, well, you know what I will say is this, Alex. Um, don't get into this if you want to make money and be successful. Do it if you love it, and and that's what I do. And and fortunately, and you know, God bless. Thank you, baby Jesus. Fortunately, um, I've managed to make enough money that um, I can keep going. But and I've been lucky in that respect. But even if I didn't make money. I, I would I would still do it because it's a cliched phrase. Music is its own reward. And you know that there's nothing greater than when you've written a song or you've done a, a good show. It does there's, there's nothing better. I think that's a great a great message to young bands. I am... Um... A few years back, I went to Tramlines Festival in Sheffield and went to the B spent most of my time in the BBC introducing stage, and there was some wonderful young musicians. But it's if they're going in, into it for music, they're perhaps going into the wrong industry now, aren't they? Because for these young guys, it's not easy to make well, money. Is well, it? Yes, um, it's it's like it's and it's very difficult to make money these days. Uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate. I don't make a lot of money, but I make enough. You know, and uh, I'm very grateful for that. And uh, you know, it's it's like like I said, music is its own reward. If you get paid for it, great. But if you don't, that's okay as well. Yeah. Can I can I ask this question, Ian? And you can tell me to sod off. If was the end of the icicle works a good thing for Ian McNabb, or was it a bad thing for Ian McNabb? 
good question. <laughs> uh, it was awful. And I, I was reading um, uh, a thing, a, a, a Beatles book. Um, have you seen uh, the Get Back thing that... Um, the, the the guy that did Lord of the Rings, what was his name? Peter Jackson. He did this documentary and he found the, all the footage about when the Beatles were breaking up. And the, there was some footage in there that I'd never seen and none of us had ever seen when Paul McCartney realised that his band was finished. And you can see he looks... Um, devastated, and I was the same way, you know, because you know I'd been with those guys from nineteen eighty till I think it was eighty eight, and you know we were a little family, and you know we loved each other. I certainly loved them. I hope they loved me, and it was it was devastating. It really was devastating. Um. It's like the end of a relationship with, you know, well, it was, we were a three-piece. So it was like finishing with two girlfriends <laughs> for me. Um, I, I find it quite difficult to talk about, you know. Mm. And was I upset? Yes. But, you know, I, I, you bounce back, don't you? I mean... Alex, I'll, I'll be honest with you. You know, I've recently lost m my mother. And it's just been unbelievably hard, you know. About as hard as it was leaving my band and them leaving me. This is the best interview you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I uh, I'm passionate about music, Ian. I'm not not uh, my dad was a pianist. I'm not uh, gifted in that way, but I I I I love chatting to musicians. I was I chatted to Rick Witter from Shed Seven about um, their breakup and how it was very traumatic for him as well. And then somebody, one of the guys, the drummer, picked the phone up and said, "Why don't we just have a beer?" You know. Um, and I notice you're you've got some dates lined up with Big Country, haven't you? And is it is it is this a is this hope to be a, a celebration then when you get back together with certain individuals? I know there's been different guys from the band that you've hooked up with over the years, hasn't there? Is it is it a celebration or can it be? Um. Well, do, do you know what I I think that. It's a celebration if people turn up, you know, and, and they, they like the songs and, you know, they have a good time. And uh, I'm, I'm playing with uh, Chris Slaves, the bass player with um, Icicle Works. And uh, is it a celebration? Yeah. Hell, why not? You know. You know, it's, it's like, you know, when people turn up to hear the songs, you know, that's good enough for me. Yeah. And which are your which are which are the songs that you've written that mean the most to you on an individual level, or, or is it a, is it a full repertoire that feels that way? Well, you know, you like some better than others, obviously. Um. I, You know, it's 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 difficult to answer that one really. Um, musicians love the latest thing they've done, but if if I listen to or play Hollow Horse or When It All Comes Down, and you know, it's it's, and I think they are good songs. Hmm. But I, I, I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. I don't. Do, do you know, Ian? This is you know. You're right. This is I, I've I've done over 170 odd podcasts, and I was um I was a bit um 
not frightened, not the word, but I, I, I've been looking you up and I've been listening to your music. And what I, what I think about you is you are incredibly unique. And I think maybe that is why uh, you have the fan base that you do that I, I can't, I, I was chatting to my daughter because she's always asking who's coming on the Godcast. And she was saying, well, what's his music like? And it's like, well, well, it's, uh, I was a bit like, well, it's a bit, he's a bit of a, a rebel song. He, he's a bit of a Bob Dylan, but, but then he's a bit, you know, he's a bit, he can be a bit poppy and I just couldn't put you in a box. Uh, you know, uh, how would you describe your, yourself as a musician or, or your genre? What is it? <laughs> I'm chuffed to hear that. Um, <laughs> but you, you're asking, you're asking, you're asking me to categorize. Categor yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> I've no idea, Alex. I, I, I haven't. I'm eclectic. I, you know, I, I, I love. I, you know, probably one of the reasons why I haven't been more successful is because I'm just all over the place, you know. Um, I, I, You know, it's like one minute I love the Beach Boys, the next minute I love Led Zeppelin, the next minute I love, you know, Nick Drake, the next minute I love Neil Young, the next minute I love the Penguin. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm just, that. that's, that's where I am. Um... And, and and by the way, and and one thing that, pe that people say is, and I've seen this with some great artists, it's like they, they can't believe that they're still... Even Paul McCartney said, can't believe I'm still getting away with it. <laughs> and, and and that's how I feel. You know, I, I, I really do. It's... it's you know, I'm, I'm a fan who can. <laughs> and uh, you know, and I've got to open for so many great acts like Neil Young, Brian Wilson, and you know, all, all of those guys. I I can't. I honestly can't believe it. Um, I'm just so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. And are you a, are you an artist that um, that looks back mainly at music, Ian, or or do you hold an interest in music that's out there at the moment? Do you look for new artists yourself? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I don't think that there can be anything more exciting than, you know, when you hear a new new record um, by a, an unknown artist and, and you go, wow, that's really great. And then you, you, you find it and you go online and... Um, I love this thing on, I mean, I hate Spotify for what it does to artists. Mm. But what I do like about it is it's got me into a load of stuff that I would never have found. And it goes, seeing as you like this, you may like this. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I, I really love that. And I've got into so many artists from that. Uh, yeah, always looking for the new thing, you know, because the old thing was the new thing once, you know. Yeah, are you are you are you a nostalgic individual, Ian? Do you, do you, you know, do you? I know you said you didn't particularly like talking about the break, but the high school works. But do you do you look back at that time with fondness? You know, the your moment in the sun on top of the pops and things. Well, why wouldn't I? You know, I was like twenty bloody two or something, and I was on top of the pops, and then we. You know, we went and toured America, and it was fabulous. Mm -hmm. So, and I have, a, have I got a problem with that? Absolutely not. You know, it, ev everything that that has happened to me since I picked up a guitar when I was twelve has been great. It, you know, it, honest to God, Alex, it's, it's unbelievable. I've got to meet so many lovely people uh, and you know met so many supporters and and uh and 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 can, can i just tell you something else i'm good you know it <laughs> <laughs>
and I know it. And I don't mean that in a... Um, I know I wasn't very good the other day because I was not well and stuff. But, you know, you just put that down to health. You know, I, I was devastated because I couldn't do a good show. But most of the time, in fact, all of the time, it's great. And, uh, you know, it, it it's like... When you do a good show, when you make a good record and people look, do you know, I just like making people happy. Yeah, yeah. You, I, you are good, Ian. You are. I, I, um, my dad was a jazz pianist and I used to, I'm not, a, I don't like jazz really, uh, but I love, I love it. It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> I loved watching him. I just loved watching his, his fingers on the, on the ivories and, and I found, I found myself, well, I did come and see you a few weeks back. I did find my myself not so much watching your face, but your your body language and the way that your you were in relationship with the piano and the way you're in relationship with the guitar. And you are a good man. There's no there's no denying that. And and that is a wonderful. That's, that's, that's very 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 kind of you to say that. Thank you, Alex. I, 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 that means a lot to me. It really does. And I I do feel that way, you know, it's um honest to goodness, Alex, I, I, I just can't believe that I mean I fell into it by accident, you know. I wanted to be um I'm a hate war, but I wanted to be a fighter pilot. I didn't want to fight anyone. But I just like the planes, you know. I love the um, Supermarine Spitfire. That that's kind of aviation was, was where I was, where I was headed. But I can't count, and I've got bad eyesight. Uh, so that that you know, so it's like that was, and you know, coming from that generation of you know the the, the Apollo moon landings and and what have you, that was really exciting. You know, like my mum and dad. Get me out of bed when I was, oh, what was it, 69? So I would have been eight. Saying, come downstairs, we're about to land on the moon. And it was just mind-blowing. But I was just not cut out to do that kind of thing. I probably could have been a half-decent journalist because I'm, I'm good with language. I was rubbish at football. Um, I, was, I was definitely not an athlete. Um, and then music turned up, and it just gave me. I honestly don't know what I would have done without it, you know. Mm. Well, I think you've got many fans out there who are glad that you you chose music. Uh, it's a, it, you know, it's a bit like it, to me. It's it just listening to you. It's, it's a love affair, really, isn't it? It's just a love affair that's just gone on forever. A, a love affair, Alex, that will never end. Yeah. And and thank goodness for that. Yeah. Ian, I've absolutely, truly enjoyed chatting to you. It sounds like you've got a busy year ahead. I'm sure all your fans will be wishing you well and hope that you are restored to full health very quickly. And um, we're not far away in Burnley. You're, I know you're, you've got those beautiful dulcet scouse tones still there and uh, you're over there and and uh, just send you all our love and, and thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Alex, for having me on the show.